One of the greatest mysteries of the solar system is whether Mars has, or once had, microbial life. We know it was once like Earth, and it seems to hint that it could be an abode of life. So here are 10 indicators that Mars may have had, or may still have, life. Number 10. The Viking Experiments In 1976, NASA successfully launched the Viking 1 and 2 missions on the surface of Mars. One of the experiments on board the landers was the labeled Release Experiment, designed to detect Martian microbial life. Essentially, the experiment exposed nutrients to the Martian environment, and then looked for any evidence that something was metabolizing it. The experiment returned a positive. This detection has been problematic and controversial ever since. Part of the problem is that other experiments on the lander failed to detect organics. Another part is that the Martian surface is an extremely inhospitable environment. Problem one is radiation from the sun. And problem two are the presence of chemicals such as perchlorate, which can destroy organic compounds. This reaction would produce chloromethane and dichloromethane as byproducts, and those were apparently detected, opening up the possibility that the detection was real, and the reason that organics were not found was that they were simply destroyed. Whether the Viking landers detected life on the surface of Mars is still an open question. The only way to solve that mystery is to go to Mars and experiment some more. This will no doubt happen in the coming years as the human exploration of Mars becomes a reality. Number 9. Formaldehyde In 2005, the European Space Agency's Mars Express Orbiter detected a rather odd chemical signature in the atmosphere of Mars. It's formaldehyde. We normally think of this chemical as a constituent of embalming fluid and a carcinogen, but there's more to it than that. We see formaldehyde in the universe, and interstellar formaldehyde has been extensively studied within the Milky Way. And for good reason, it's an organic compound. In the case of formaldehyde in the atmosphere of Mars, it's possible that it could be a byproduct of the oxidation of methane. This would suggest that Mars is very geologically active, but we really don't see that it is. Its major volcanoes appear long dead, and what may still be occurring doesn't seem too active. The other option is that it's a byproduct of microbial life, but this is a pretty ambiguous indicator in the end. Number 8. The Lichen That Could Survive on Mars one of the best ways we have of understanding if there was or is life on Mars is to look at very resilient species of organisms here on Earth. Simulate the conditions of Mars and see if they could survive. While a number of resilient bacteria from Earth have been shown to be able to survive the conditions expected at shallow levels in the soils of Mars, one organism stood out. It was an Antarctic lichen. Known as P. chlorophanum, it survived at temperatures as low as minus 51 Celsius low atmospheric pressure like that of Mars, and endured large amounts of radiation during a 34-day experiment. The lichen fared well enough that if it had some protection against radiation, such as living under a rock or in a crack, it might actually be able to survive on the surface of Mars long term in an active state. And in fact, it adapted to the conditions and ramped up photosynthesis as the experiment went on. In other experiments involving lichens, they've shown themselves not only capable of handling Mars, but clinging to life in space itself. Lichens might also survive things like Mars's global dust storms by going into a dormant state, something that some Earth lichens can do on the order of centuries if covered in snow or dust. This one has two implications. Firstly, if Mars ever developed life like this lichen, then that life could still be there, surviving in cracks or beneath rocks. Second, we should be careful with what life we transport to Mars, even accidentally, because some of it could, in principle, survive and contaminate that planet. Number 7. Oil on Mars One of the strangest possibilities is that if Mars once had, or still has, microbial life, it may be possible that the process that produced crude oil deposits on Earth might also have occurred on Mars. On Earth, crude oil deposits are thought to be produced when marine microorganisms die and become trapped in sedimentary deposits. As this becomes sedimentary rock, heat and pressure converts the material into petroleum. While the origin of petroleum is somewhat controversial, in the case of Mars it might have been possible for oil to form from any microorganisms that were present in the past, or, in an alternate hypothesis, trapped hydrocarbons left over from the formation of the solar system, and have crude oil deposits. In principle, these should be detectable as methane emissions, effectively natural gas, through the geologic exploration of Mars, and, maybe someday, an oil rig. Number 6. The Reanimating Corpse Planet 
This is more of a concept than an indicator, though if it were to happen, it would provide a perfect opportunity for observing life on Mars from here on Earth. One of the things that makes the surface of Mars inhospitable to most life as we know it is the high amount of ionizing radiation that reaches the surface, but this changes. Due to Mars's orbital eccentricity and the tilt of its axis, it may be that Mars goes through periods, the most recent being about 450,000 years ago, where dormant surface life on Mars hidden beneath the surface might reanimate and recolonize the surface for a time, a sort of periodic Frankenstein planet that reanimates periodically and resembles its former self. If this is the case, then that dormant life might still be viable and detectable as shallow as one meter below the surface. Future missions to Mars might look there and see what they find. Number 5. Martian Geysers Mars's southern polar cap is in a constant state of frosting and defrosting seasonally. Because of this, CO2 and likely water can pressurize beneath the surface and erupt as a geyser, usually in the form of cold fluids mixed with mud. This process happens rather quickly, even by geological standards here on Earth, which makes it very odd for sleepy Mars. Around these geysers, dark spots and channels can be seen that are not well understood. One team has proposed that they represent photosynthesizing microorganisms. The idea is that these microorganisms hibernate while the southern polar cap is in darkness. As the sunlight returns, however, light reaches the ice and the organisms beneath. As they start to photosynthesize, they produce heat and liquid water, which is trapped under the ice and cannot evaporate. The sun then further melts the ice and the microorganisms appear gray. But as soon as the ice melts completely, they dry out and turn black, creating the dune spots. While this remains a possibility, it could also be something entirely geological that forms the dune spots. Only by going there with a probe will we answer the question definitively. Number 4. Curiosity and Complex Organics In the summer of 2018, NASA's Mars Curiosity rover at Gale Crater was studying roughly 3.5 billion year old mudstone rocks. Within these rocks, something was seen that hadn't been seen on Mars before. Large concentrations of organic chemicals, essentially the missing organics that the Viking landers had failed to detect. They came in the form of very complex organic molecules thought to have been preserved due to the presence of sulfur. Even stranger, this mix of chemicals resembles what happens when carogens break down. Carogens are interesting because they are of biological origin here on Earth, and in fact are a precursor to crude oil. But resembling does not make for a dead ringer, just a hint that life may have been responsible. Number 3. Fossilized Bacterial Mats on Mars Life leaves its mark on planet Earth in many ways, ranging from the oxygen in our atmosphere to the fossils of shells one might find eroding from a mountainside. But even the smallest life, the bacteria, do leave traces of themselves. One such trace are fossilized bacterial mats that show the action of bacterial colonies millions of years ago. Here on Earth, these mats form in areas of shallow water, such as lakes or coastal areas. If the mats are undisturbed, they can fossilize, and in fact may represent some of the oldest fossil evidence of life on Earth, with one formation in Australia yielding examples that are as old as 3.48 billion years. But Earth is not the only place where potential fossilized bacterial mats have been seen. There are candidates on Mars photographed by NASA's Curiosity rover. Present are domes, roll-ups, pits, and other indicators in the sedimentary rock that looks much like they do here on Earth. More mats here on Earth change as they dry up, rebound, and so on. This also appears to be the case with the structures on Mars. The rocks look eerily similar. Unfortunately, to go much further with this one, we would need a sample return mission to bring samples of the sedimentary rock back to Earth to be studied in a lab. This is unlikely to happen anytime soon. Number 2. The Martian Meteorites It may surprise you, but we actually have pieces of Mars right here on Earth in the form of meteorites that originated on the surface of that planet, but were blown off into space during large impacts. There are currently over 100 known examples of meteorites that show geologic and chemical evidence indicating a Martian origin. Some of these rocks may indicate the presence of past life on Mars. This is a controversial topic, and no consensus within science has formed around just what's going on with certain features in these meteorites. At one point, it was even announced by then-President Bill Clinton that evidence of life had indeed been detected in the Allen Hills 84001 meteorite. This was called into question by other researchers, but it's an interesting factoid that the only government to have ever announced evidence of the existence of extraterrestrial life in an official capacity 
was the US government under the auspices of NASA, and they jumped the gun and announced it too early only for it to be called into question. Wrap your minds around that one, conspiracy theorists. The first of these meteorites is the aforementioned Allen Hills 84001. This meteorite was found in Antarctica, and in 1996 it was reported that microscopic features along with geochemical anomalies may indicate evidence for past life in this meteorite. The problem was that this life was very small, far smaller than Earth microbes, and as the story unfolded it became clear that non-biological processes could explain all of the features seen within the rock. But life could also have been responsible, so the question to this day remains up in the air. Another example is the Nakla meteorite, which fell in Egypt in 1911. With this meteorite, evidence of what looked like nanobacteria again were found. Further, they found organic chemicals within the meteorite that might be life-related. And they further found that most of it probably isn't recent earthly contamination, but actually from Mars. But carbon is a common element, and you don't need life for it to exist. In fact, it's the opposite in Earth's case with its carbon-based life. So no dead ringer here. Two other meteorites that show anomalies are the Shurgati and Yamato 000593 meteorites. Shurgati shows what appears to be alteration by water, before it arrived on Earth. Fragments of this meteorite were picked up almost immediately by residents of Shurgati, India, and it was an observed fall, so this is a very pristine example of a Martian meteorite. Within it, what appears to be a biofilm associated with microbes has been reported, but more work on this meteorite needs to be done before anything conclusive can be said. With Yamato 000593, this meteorite is effectively a lava rock, a basalt that formed on Mars about 1.3 billion years ago. There it sat until about 12 million years ago when it was ejected in an impact. Evidence of exposure to liquid water before it fell to Earth is present in this meteorite, but there are also bizarre spheres of carbon found inside, but only in certain parts of the rock. Biology being responsible for this is on the table, but again, it's far from conclusive evidence. Number 1. Methane The biggest hint that something life-related may be going on at Mars is the gas methane, which is a gas that life on Earth produces. Mars's atmosphere makes methane chemically unstable. The ultraviolet radiation streaming off the sun and the chemistry of Mars's atmosphere quickly destroys the gas. This means that if methane is present on Mars, it must be replenished by some process, either geological or biological. Methane has indeed been detected on Mars. And the source of that methane is rather mysterious and tantalizing. We're not talking about a lot of methane, which was first detected on Mars in 2003. But as study continued, it became clear that the methane was concentrated in certain areas on Mars, and more provocatively, appears to be seasonal. Seasonal methane releases could be produced geologically, but we also know how seasonal changes impact life here on Earth, and the lack of obvious volcanism and hydrothermal energy on Mars would be a point against geology. Bolstering this were observations from June of 2019 by the Curiosity rover, which detected unprecedented levels of methane being released. While it's still not clear if it's biological in origin, it could be that methanogenic bacteria very similar to the earliest life on Earth could still be active on Mars, deep below the surface, where liquid water is still possible. Once again, only human exploration is likely to answer the question. Thanks for listening. I am futurist and science fiction author John Michael Godier, currently envisioning oil rigs on Mars. CO2 emissions will actually help Mars to warm back up. So instead of electric Mars rovers, we'll need fleets of gas-guzzling LeBarons. And later this week on Event Horizon, I will be speaking with Dr. John McGowan, who wrote the paper on the possibility of petroleum fields on Mars that he wrote back in the year 2000 while at NASA Ames. Links to the paper and the interview below. And be sure to check out my books at your favorite online book retailer and subscribe to my channels for regular in-depth explorations into the interesting, weird, and unknown aspects of this amazing universe in which we live.